what does it mean to take personal responsibility or what is personal responsibility? My name is Dr. Erica Steele. I'm a board certified naturopathic doctor. I hold six degrees in my field, all in the natural healthcare space. And I teach you not only personal responsibility, but so many different things of re relating to holistic health, holistic wellness. Um, so I have tons of courses below. You can go ahead and scroll through uh, my little co course store, if you will. I teach about nutrition, mental health, emotional health, detox vacation, you name it. I teach about it and I'm adding new courses every single week. So definitely keep in touch with me with that. Um, okay. So what does it mean to take personal responsibility in the context of your health? Because remember, we have different um, context, if you will, or different areas of our life. So the area of our life could be that we're working on our mental health or our emotional health, or we're working on our career, or we're working on finance and money, or we're working on our you know, friendship relationships versus our partnership relationships. So what is all of this? right? So we're just going to, for the sake of this video, we're going to look at it from the context of your health, because I think health is deeply personal for so many people. Um, I'm here in New York about to catch a flight. And um, I, you know, I ran across a couple uh, physicians while I was here and we were talking about, you know, the unfortunate nature of healthcare. You know, people, um, unfortunately, they self-neglect. They don't take care of themselves. Really, I believe it's because we haven't been taught. Many of us have not been taught how to take care of ourselves. We've been taught to self-abandon. Uh, we've been taught to overgive to everyone else. We've been taught really that our needs um, don't matter and that everyone else's needs matter the most. And so we've developed a lot of codependent habits and we're constantly overgiving and exhausting ourselves to the point that we self-neglect and break ourselves down. I mean, I, I've been guilty of that before too, especially as a doctor, you're constantly working and helping other people. Um, and so it's very easy to slip into that dynamic. Um, I was also talking with one of the physicians uh, just yesterday about, you know, uh, the suicide rates, unfortunately, with physicians is so high. Why? Because we are constantly taking care of other people and neglecting ourselves. Nurses definitely fall into that camp too. So you know, taking personal responsibility, we can understand why we have been programmed almost not to. So there's that, you know, behavioral and uh, developmental education. But then there's also the societal uh, perception, if you will, that somebody is going to save us, right? So we see that all over the Disney Channel. We see that over, you know, all over, you know, it's like there, especially as a woman, right? There's like a, a knight in shining armor that's going to come and, and, you know, save us, you know, I, I don't know. I think he, I think he got lost or, or eaten or something cause he didn't show up. Um, so, you know, the reality is, is that, you know, we have been taught to look outside of ourselves for someone else, right? So we've been trained, we're going to give our power away to someone else, right? And that someone else, whoever that may be, whether that's a doctor, whether that's a partner, whether that's a government, somebody else outside of ourselves is the operant power and they are going to fix it, save it, make it all better, right? So we can look, right? That could also be a symptom of, let's say, not being nurtured as a child, not having, you know, uh, a healthy mother role or a healthy father role, right? So that taps into worthiness and deserving and all of those other emotions related to that. So we, we have been trained not to take personal responsibility and also that we're a victim, right? We're just a victim to circumstance, right? We just wake up one day and things happen. And in the context, of health, it doesn't work that way. You know, every single day you're either building health or building disease based off of your habits. And so if your habits are healthy, 80% of the time, your health, not disease process, because a lot of times people, you, people believe that the absence of disease is the state of health and that's not the case. Health is something that's built every single day consistently with your mindset, your emotional health, your, you know, drinking water, you are, you know, eating enough protein, etc. And so consistent breakdowns of that, consistent 
unhealthy habits are then eventually going to lead to disease and uh, an unhealthy body. It doesn't just happen out of nowhere. So we've got to transcend this victim consciousness, transcend this idea that we are not responsible or that, you know, it's just, it just happens. Right. And I also think that the world of genetics kind of planted that seed as well, because it was believed a long time ago before the genome project that, you know, if you, let's say, you know, have, um, you know, hypertensive in your family, right? Hypertensive gene, uh, you have a uh, nitric oxide NOS, right? So you have that gene. Um, it, it's automatic that you're just going to develop hypertension, not realizing that genetics only accounts for less than 30%. The rest is, you guessed it, personal responsibility in your lifestyle. And so, you know, of course, in family systems, they pass down the same unhealthy habits. And so, of course, there's going to be that relationship. Is it because of, you know, genetics that definitely loaded the gun, but that didn't pull the trigger? And so, we also have those pieces uh, to consider as well. Um, and so I definitely wanted to um, educate you about these distinctions so that you can understand the role of personal responsibility in all areas of your life, not just in your health. So, but again, I talked to, we're going to use this in the context of your health. Um, so let's jump into it. How do we take radical personal responsibility? So number one, we're going to look at what our current state of health is, right? This is why I love metrics and I love data so much. So patients come to me, I do all of these assessments with them, I look at their labs, I take questionnaires, I do all of these things, and then I give them, so that's all the qualitative where I'm taking all of the information from the patient, and then I put it in a quantitative format, a measured uh, amount. So I can actually tell you, okay, your state of health is based off of this particular number, right? Um, and so we get baseline numbers. And so that is a lot of times very scary for people because we're trained, oh my gosh, not to look. I don't want to see this. Um, I'm going to avoid it. I'm going to repress it. I'm going to deny it. But unfortunately, when you do that, what tends to happen is that um, it just gets worse and worse and worse. It doesn't get better. Um, and so we really want to take radical, that's why I said radical personal responsibility and choose to look and choose to see. And that's where all of those repressed emotions come up to the surface. They really start to, uh, you know, come up to be looked at and exposed. And um, I tell people the first three months working with me really sucks because um, you're, it doesn't always have to be, but a lot of times it is because we're, 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 we're definitely peeling the layers back for you to really see what's going on with your health and well-being. And so that can be, you know, very confronting. It can be very uncomfortable, but we ease you through that process because if you don't see where your state of health is, again, you're not taking personal responsibility and you're not able to make any changes. So then you, you wind up years and years and years later in, in another doctor's office going, oh my God, this happened out of nowhere. And then that doctor is going to look at you and be like, no, this didn't happen out of nowhere, right? Because we as, as doctors have a lot of in-depth education. Um, you may not want to hear what we have to say some of the time, but you know, we, we are trained in the complexities of the body and how the body works. And so recognizing that, trusting that, honoring that, that's why it's so important to find a provider that you know, love and trust because that particular provider is able to help guide you through, you know, really making those changes. And even if, you know, you are not interested in the diagnose and manage model. Now, there are times where management of disease is important. You know, there are times where, you know, you've waited a long time to address these things. And so your body has manifested disease process. And so, you know, thank God for modern medicine, because now we have tools that can extend life or, you know, even prevent things from getting worse. It doesn't always mean that you're going to be on that for the rest of your life, but sometimes you do need to stabilize a pharmacological stabilizer while you take personal responsibility and accountability with your health um, and make some of those changes. And then, you know, your doctors can reevaluate, okay, you know, can you come off of this uh, particular medication? Can you titrate down um, as long as the body's health stays stable? Because of course, we don't want to do any harm and we want to make sure, you know, that you're well. And so 
I do a lot of that work uh, in integrative medicine uh, with my um, with medical doctors and allopathic doctors that I work alongside with. So, um, yeah, I just really wanted to educate you about the role of personal responsibility. So, um, first thing is really get an assessment of what's going on. Now, you can personally assess yourself. I wouldn't recommend it just because you can't be objective. I would have a, a, ideally a healthcare provider to do that um, to assess you. However, you know everybody's uh, situation is different. If you're going to personally assess yourself, I would look at you know markers like pain on a scale of one to ten. How's your pain? Um, how's your sleep? Uh, how much water do you drink? Every every day? How many grams of protein do you eat every single day? How much do you weigh? How much are you supposed to weigh? Um, do you have that kind of midsection, that tire around the belly? You know, I would really get honest with yourself in terms of that. And I would put it in metric format, meaning I would put it in a number format. So like, you know, I would actually get on the scale. I would do a measuring tape around your midsection so that you have your baseline numbers and you understand where you're at. Okay. So now, that you have that, the second step is to create a plan, right? So what are you going to do with that? A lot of times this works with mindset first. I have a great self-concept uh, video about that. So um, definitely watch that video to kind of gain perspective on how you take uh, some personal accountability and responsibility using mindset work. Because again, if you don't make a decision to get well first, forget it. Like don't even buy the, don't even buy the gym shoes. Don't even buy, you know, the, the gym membership. Don't even, you know, invest in the program because if you don't have the mindset of that, you'll do it maybe for a few weeks and then you'll stop. That's why new year's resolutions don't work because everybody gets excited about the new year. And then by February, March, April, everybody's like back to where they, they were at. So definitely create a plan and create a plan that is going to be realistic, right? Um, so specific, uh, realistic, measurable, um, attainable, um, and timely. So that was, those are the smart goals. I know I set them out of order, but you know, you want to use something to measure. So let's say you're going to start with, you know, meditating every day for five minutes, right? Get that down first and then maybe move on to, let's say drinking half your body weight in ounces in water and create a structure for that. And so, so you want to move slowly because again, these are lifestyle changes. These are not, you know, this is not a fad. This is not, you know, people sometimes will say like, well, how long do I have to do this for? Um, till you die, like, you know, till you can't do it anymore. Um, so, you know, this is how we build health every single day and how we take personal responsibility in the area of your health. It is slowly, surely, deliberately over an extended period of time. And so that's how we make these changes right? So then the last thing you're going to do is do check-ins with yourself, right? So some sort of metrics. I love those little habit trackers because you can just check them off. You could say, okay, I meditated today. Great check. I drank my water today. Check. I got my protein check, right? Maybe those are your top three. Um, and then you, you kind of work from there and you're going to track it every single day. And then maybe at the end of the month, you go, you go back and you look and see how you did and you go, okay, great. So if I complete this, you know, for a month, I, you know, get to go to Disney World or whatever your thing is. I mean, naturally, don't use food as a reward, please. Um, you know, use something, you know, that, that I get to go to a concert or, you know, I'm going to go to, you know, a, 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 um, you know, a show that I wanted to see or whatever. But definitely reward yourself for taking that personal accountability and responsibility. That's called positive psychology. And so that means you're going to constantly be motivated to do those things. And of course, you know, if your goal is to lose weight or that sort of thing, you're going to see a drop in the scale if, you know, so that's always a motivator too. Um, if your goal is, let's say to, um, you know, improve uh, your hydration, you're naturally going to, your skin's going to feel better. Your head's going to feel better. That's a great motivator as well. Um, let's say if you're meditating, that kind of thing, your mental health is going to improve. You know, there's lots of different metrics that you can use for that. So, I just wanted to jump on and teach you guys about personal responsibility before I have to catch my plane. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, please comment below, like, share, and subscribe. And again, we have tons of courses. I'm always developing more um, all around various topics just like this, right? Um, from core values to step-by-step uh, -step how to do what I'm asking you to do to uh, nutrition, meal plans, exercise, all kinds. Of, I even have a water course, right? So all 
all kinds of things, tools to help you. And every single day you are, it's already been done for you. So you already get every single day, you get what your task is, you get to check it off. So you get that little, you know, dopamine hit from, from being able to do that. You can track your water, your food, your body biometrics, all within that app as well. Um, so that's all included with every course that you take with me and you have access to the, um, the app even after you're completed with your course. So we have lots of courses, even on metabolic health. So definitely check that out because there's a lot of really cool goodies in there for you to really help you take personal accountability and personal responsibility with your health and get well and be proactive instead of reactive. So see you in the next video.